And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. There's a lot of water here. I'm wet. And it's good. It's good. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful this morning for this day, for this opportunity. We are thankful, Lord, for these that have made their decision to follow you and then, Lord, have made a decision to be obedient to you, Father, by, by being baptized as, as you have commanded. And, Father, we know that there's great responsibility that they have, and, Lord, we know that there's a great responsibility that we have. But, Father, in these moments, we rejoice and we are grateful. We're thankful for their testimony. We're thankful, Lord, for the word that they are speaking uh, to us today. And I pray, Lord, that we would be open to your presence today, that we would be open to your word. And we thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you provide for us every single day. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in the early days of the church, way back when, look in the book of Acts, when the church first began, when an individual was baptized, it was a declaration that this believer was, was making that they were uniting themselves and definitely identifying with a group of people, Christians, a group of people who were despised and hated. Uh, in that time, to identify yourself with those who were called Christian meant persecution. It also meant that maybe you would even lose your life. And it certainly meant that you were ostracized from your family and society and that you were shunned by all of your friends. And that one act that we just witnessed just a few moments ago, that that one act of baptism was the final declaration of their identification with God through Jesus Christ. And as long as a person gathered with, with Christians, uh, it, they were tolerated. Things were okay. But once they submitted to, bap to being baptized... Then they were declaring to the whole world that they belonged to this despised group of people. And immediately the persecution began. Through baptism, therefore, the believer entered into the fellowship of the sufferings of Jesus. They would suffer for the decision that they had made. However, over the years, it's been a long time since the early church began, over the years, the prominence of baptism in Christian worship has, has gradually eroded to such a point that oftentimes today when we baptize someone, we kind of just throw it at the beginning of the service or we kind of like tack it on at the end and a person is baptized, and there's little or no explanation of why we are celebrating such a significant act on their, on, on their part. And so our, our tank home today, and what, what, what I'd like to leave you with as you go today, I want you to remember that baptism has significance for the individual who is being baptized. Baptism has significance for the church, and it also has significance for everyone who is here to witness what has taken place. So when we talk about baptism and why we baptize, the first statement that I, that I would like to say is that, that baptism first and foremost is an act of obedience. Some of the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples or that he spoke to us that we have recorded, is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And in those verses, Jesus gives a, a threefold command to the disciples. He, he gives a threefold command to all who would follow Jesus. Those words are, and, and you know the words, 
the Great Commission. Therefore, Jesus says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There, there are three commands that Jesus makes. And Lisa, if you go back to that previous slide, and I have it underlined, uh, the, the first command is that as Christians, we are to make disciples. Now, the command is not really to go. The command is not to go. Because that word go that's used there in that passage means as you go. It is inferred, it is, it is intimated that we will be going. So that's not the command. The command is number one, make disciples. And then Jesus says, after you've made disciples, that means that, you've, that people come to follow Jesus. Um, they're followers of Jesus. Then he says, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then to the next slide. And then after you've made disciples and after you have baptized them, he says, then I want you to teach them. I want you to teach them. So if for no other reason, the reason why we baptize and the reason why a person is baptized is because Jesus told us to. He told us to do it. Obedience is a characteristic of an individual who follows Jesus. He said to the disciples, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And he's commanded us to be baptized. So baptism is an act of obedience for the new believer, for the believer. And it's also an act of obedience to the church as we baptize those who believe. We baptize because we desire to obey Jesus' command. Secondly, why do we baptize? We baptize because baptism is an opportunity to witness, to give testimony, to share. In the New Testament and in church history, it, it seems to, to indicate that baptism served as the way in which individuals uh, profess their faith in Jesus Christ. And you, you look through, through the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 8. Philip is, is, is preaching to the Ethiopian on his way back home. And he shares the word of God with him. And the Ethiopian receives Jesus Christ. And immediately he wants to know when he can be baptized. In Acts chapter 16, the Philippian jailer responds to the preaching of Paul and Silas by desiring to be baptized. And the scripture says in Acts 16 that, that not only was the jailer baptized, but his whole family believed and they were baptized. It's same for, for Lydia in Acts chapter 16 as well. Uh, for Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. In Acts 18 we talk about the, the Corinthians and, and, and they, were, they came to know Christ and they wanted to be baptized. For these believers... Baptism was a, a testimony. It was an outward expression of an inward change in their life, of their new faith, their new way of life. And baptism is also a whip, witnessing opportunity for us. It wasn't just for them. It is for us. In Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, Paul writes this. He says, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So according to these verses, our baptism is a witness. It's a testimony to the saving work of Jesus. Jesus, the scripture says, that he died, and he was buried, and he was raised up. And don't we see, didn't we just see that this morning? Didn't we just, eight times we saw that. We saw that. It reminds us what Jesus did. 
And then when baptism is also a, a witness of what happens to us at our salvation. When we were saved. When we decided to become a follower of Jesus. When we received the gospel into our heart and into our life. This is what happened to us. We died to our old life. We gave up our old life, our old way. And, 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 we, and we were buried. We buried it. But, but praise be to God, Jesus raised us from the dead and he gave us a new life that we're able to walk in. So we went down into the water. We buried that old life and we came up out of the water symbolizing the new life that we have in Jesus Christ. And then, then baptism is also a, a testimony, a witness to those who do not believe. For those that don't understand. Um, in the Old Testament, when the people of God crossed over the Jordan River into the Promised Land, Joshua brought them. And as they crossed over the Jordan, and, and you remember this, it was flood time, and, and, and they couldn't get across the Jordan River. And so the Lord parted the waters, just like he did for Moses. And the people of Israel came across, came across into the promised land. And after they got across, Joshua said, I want 12 volunteers. I want 12 men. And I want you to go back into the water. I want you to pull up 12 big rocks, 12 big stones. Um, this is all in Joshua chapter 4. And I want you to pull up four big stones out of the water. And I want you to make a little altar. I want you to set them up one on top of the other. And someone said, well, why are you going to do that, Joshua? And he says, we're going to do this so that every time anyone comes by this way, they will know what God has done for us. It's a testimony of what God did for the people of Israel. As, as generations and generations of individuals, as they went by that way, they weren't there when it happened, but they were reminded of what took place, that God had saved them, and God had brought them to the promised land. You see, the same kind of thing happens for individuals who have yet to experience saving faith. They, they, they haven't yet quite understood or they haven't quite accepted it. Maybe they've never heard it, but they see the testimony of these individuals. I imagine this morning that once you leave this place and as you head off to lunch or whatever you need to do, I imagine many of you, most of you, if not all of you, will be talking about the baptism today. Eight people being baptized. Water all over the floor. People dripping as they go back into the back room and changing. You'll be talking about that. And, and someone might say, you know, why do they do that? And you'll have an opportunity to share with them the significance of knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and being baptized. You'll have an opportunity to share the gospel with folks who have questions about Jesus and salvation and sin. And then thirdly, why do we baptize? We, we baptize uh, because it's an open door into the church. The early church took the concept of, of church membership seriously. And, and, and they understood that, that church membership belonged to those who were born again, those who were regenerated, those who had received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In Acts chapter 2, it tells us that the Lord added to their number daily, added to the church's number daily, those who were being saved. And earlier in chapter 2, Peter's preaching this, 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 this gospel message. The Holy Spirit had come and people were hearing the good news of Jesus Christ in their own language. And people were responding. And they were claiming the name of Christ. And those, the scripture said, those who had repented 
and received Christ. This is what the scripture says. Those who had repented and received Christ, then, then, then they were baptized. They were baptized into the church. And therefore, the first church was made up of those who had been saved and then baptized. At baptism, the new believer, the believer in Jesus, is making a commitment not only to the Lord, but they're also making a commitment to the local church. These folks who are baptized today are identifying publicly with the Ridge Church. And with that identification comes responsibility on their part. With that privilege comes responsibility. You see, they came, they were baptized, they are part of the Ridge Church, and now they have the responsibility to support the Ridge Church with their finances, with their time, with their talent. You see, every member of the Ridge Church has that responsibility. If you're called to be a member here, you're called to have the responsibility of supporting the church with your finances. I'm, I, I don't apologize for that. I used to. I used to kind of say that really softly so you couldn't hear me. <laughs> but now, now, the more I read the scripture, the more that I understand. We, we are... We are called to, if we're called to be a member of this church, we're called to, to, to uh, support it financially. There's lots of things we need to do. And I don't know, I haven't figured out any other way to do it except with money. We have that responsibility. We have the responsibility, if you're a member of the Ridge Church, you have that responsibility to give the church your time. You give your time to the Lord through the church. You give your money to the Lord through the church. Uh, you have the responsibility of using your talent for the Lord through the church. And so, and so these folks have made that commitment today. Everyone who is a part of the fellowship of the Ridge Church should have experienced personal salvation and believer's baptism. It's not just a baptistic thing. It's a biblical thing. And so as long as the church has existed, baptism has been an integral part of the worship and the witness of God's people. And so may we never diminish that meaning or the practice or the command that Jesus presents. Um, you know, I talked about the responsibility that the church, new church members have. This is the responsibility that we have as the church to these eight folks that came this morning. We have a responsibility to include them. We have a responsibility to encourage them in their personal journey of faith. We have a responsibility as the church to support them as a fellow brother and sister in Christ. So they have responsibilities and we have responsibilities. When we talk about, about baptism, it's a time of, of celebration for the believer. It's a time of celebration for the church. And every time that we baptize, we should recognize the importance of this public commitment of faith. And I've, I've shared this message before, and when we have another baptism, I will probably share this message again because it's so important. Not only uh, what they have done, but the testimony of what they have done. It's important. And we should also present an invitation for others to follow the example of these eight. You see, it's great that these eight have made that decision and that, that they were baptized. In just a few moments, we're going to recognize those that have joined uh, the Ridge Church by statement of their faith and in Jesus Christ and have already been baptized. You see, that's all great and it's a wonderful day. But really the question of the morning is not what they have done. It's not about what they have done.
But the question of the morning is about what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? The scripture says that we're to make disciples. Are you a disciple? You have seen the gospel this morning. Have you responded to it? Will you come and follow the example of Jesus, the command of Jesus, and be baptized? Will you come this morning and, and, and will you commit your life to Christ? What we've seen today is the sermon. The question we have is, is how will you respond? Will you stand with me this morning and if there's a decision that you need to make, will you come, will you make that decision?